Today you are going to be learning to run YouTube Shorts ads. Now YouTube Short ads have been around for a while, but just recently YouTube came up with an update that allows you to target only YouTube Shorts ads. Before you had to run campaigns that involved regular YouTube ads and YouTube Shorts, and you didn't really know for sure how much of your budget was going to YouTube Shorts ads. But recently there's been an update that allows you to only target the short ads. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you that strategy. Now in order to run YouTube Short ads, you will need two things. You will need a Google Ads account, and then you will also need to have a YouTube account where you can post your YouTube short videos. They don't need to be public. You can run them as what's called unlisted. So you can see you can either have it be public or unlisted. We'll go through that in just a minute, but you will need those two things in order to run YouTube shorts ads, just a heads up. Now let's actually jump in on how to do this. So the first thing you will want to do is come in here to your Google ads account. And we are going to either click the blue plus right here or the campaigns or the create right here. There's a couple different ways you can get to it, but we're gonna hit this blue plus and we're gonna go to new campaign. Now, once we're in here, we are going to choose our objective. And now in order to solely run on YouTube shorts, you need to click the awareness and consideration objective. Then from here, we want to choose video. Then the next setting that we need is the video reach objective. It's important that you choose the video reach objective and you'll see why here in just a second. Because once you click on video reach, you'll see it will give you these options right here where we can have the efficient reach. And as part of that, one of these is YouTube shorts ads. You can see if you come over here and you do video views or ad sequence or even audio, it doesn't give you this option. And as a result, the default is you will show up on normal YouTube ads. And then also you could show up on shorts, but not so solely on short. So you want to click on video reach here, and then we want to be on the efficient reach here, then hit continue. And next you are going to want to give your campaign a name. We're going to call this shorts interest-based targeting. Now, when you're running shorts, I would recommend having an interest-based targeting audience. And then most of the time though, I would recommend for sure, most people go with a remarketing for shorts. So there's two different options that you can run and lots of different targeting options. But if you're going to be running shorts, you kind of have the option to either do a cold audience or a remarketing audience. And you have both those options that I'll show down here in a minute. For this one, we're going to do an interest-based targeting. Now this is important. This is where we want to make sure that we opt out of these other two formats and we only run shorts ads. Now, one of the downsides of only running these shorts ads is you can see the bidding strategy. I guess it's maybe a downside depending on who you ask, but the only targeting option that you do have is target CPM. So you can't change any of these other bidding strategies. You can't optimize towards a conversion only towards the maximum CPM, which is basically optimizing towards the most amount of impressions possible. So we want to come down to the campaign total. Most of the time I recommend changing this to a daily budget. You can do a campaign total if you want to, and then have it end in two weeks or whatever, have it run for a certain amount of time. But I like to do a daily budget. When you do a daily budget. What I do like about these YouTube shorts ads is you can start for very little. You can start for as little as like a dollar a day here if you wanted to. Generally, I recommend staying around at least five dollars, just depending on your budget. But if you just want to test the waters and get a campaign set up, you can start for as little as a dollar a day, which is really nice in my opinion. So you can kind of be flexible with your budget. Next, we're going to come down here to networks, and then inside of the networks, this is another important setting that you want to opt out of Google TV and out of the video partners as well, because we only want to be showing up on YouTube Shorts, and YouTube Shorts are only available on YouTube, obviously. Then come down here to the location. We're going to be targeting the United States solely, but you can adjust your location as you need. And then you do have the languages here. You can do all languages, or in my case, I'm actually going to change this to English because that is what the ad is going to be in. So I want to make sure whoever I'm targeting can actually understand the ad there. And then we are going to scroll down here to the additional settings. Now this is an important spot as well, because here we want to make sure on the devices that we move this and set on specific targeting devices and then opt out of computer tablets and TV screens. You can test tablets for yourself. In my experience, the tablets don't have as good of a value as the mobile phones and don't perform as well, but it still could be one that is worth testing for your business. But we want to make sure that we're only targeting on mobile phones for the YouTube shorts. You can go through and change the operating system device model and network as well if you want. But generally, I leave these just on all networks, all devices and all operating systems. And then here in the frequency cap, I do like to cap this. So I do like to cap the impression frequency to make sure that it's only set to like three per day, you can do this per week or per month as well. I just like to do it at three per day so that people aren't getting completely annoyed with the ad and chances are if they're seeing it more than three times a day over a long period of time, your ad spend is just going to be wasted because they're not taking an action and you're just kind of annoying the user with a bunch of ads. So I like to add a frequency cap, make sure you do this. If you don't, then YouTube can just show your ad to a person basically an unlimited amount of times based on your budget. And a lot of times people ask me what the difference between the impression cap and the view frequency is. Basically, it's the way that Google defines a impression versus a view. If somebody just sees the ad, that is an impression. If somebody actually views the video, that is a view. And I believe this right here tells you what exactly they count as a view. So here's like their definition of a view. If you wanted to go through and read that to understand understand the difference between an impression and a view. The way that I like to look at it is if people are skipping once they even see the impression, they're not really getting the view anyways. So I don't want to keep bugging those people with an ad that they're not going to watch or take an action.
option on anyways after they've seen it three times a day. And then down here, we do have an ad schedule that you can adjust as you need. I generally leave it on all days though, just depending on your product or service, but we're gonna keep that on all days here. And then third-party measurements, we're gonna leave that blank. That's more of an advanced thing that won't apply to most people. And then here is where we have our ad group name. I'm just going to leave the ad group at video efficient reach here. And then here is where all the targeting comes into place. And this is where you can do lots of different things depending on who you're wanting to target and how you are wanting to target them essentially. So when it comes to YouTube shorts, there are two basically main ways to target people. There's more than that, but two of the main ones is the interest-based or detailed demographics or using your data. This is things like customer list or remarking list. And then of course there are things like demographics. I don't recommend usually just solely targeting on demographics, but here are all the demographics that you can target and adjust based on gender, age, parental status, household income. You can adjust all of those as you need. But then here in the interest and detailed demographics, if you click down this, there are lots of different audiences that Google has basically pre-packaged for you to target. For us, we're gonna be targeting people who are do-it-yourselfers like DIYers or home and garden. So you can see it's finding some relevant audiences based on this Google ads account already here. So we're gonna add some of these because we're gonna be advertising like a wall, this wall basically that you see behind me, a slat wall kind of thing. Home decor enthusiasts, you can see it adds the audiences here and then it starts to give you an idea of how many impressions you can get with this. And it will also give us a budget. And you can see in this right-hand column, I'm kind of in the way here, but it will start to give you an idea of the impressions that you can get with this kind of audience. So this is already pretty big. Like we can get 1.7 billion views here. Now, when it comes to this, if these suggestions aren't really fitting your market, you could always type something in to see if you can target it. Like let's say we are targeting lamps. We can put type in lamps in here and chances are there's probably, if it's a pretty general product, Google is already going to have an audience built out of people who are in market for that product or service. In market means that they are searching for it actively on Google, indicating that they are probably likely to buy. So these are the kind of people that we want to get in front of for YouTube shorts to get awareness for our brand so that hopefully they can go through and purchase. So that is the first option and that's what we're gonna be running with today. Now, if you did want to run a remarketing audience, you could come over here to your data and this is where you could browse for a specific audience that you have currently inside of here. Now, if you aren't sure how to create audiences like these or create remarketing audiences, I do have a full tutorial that walks through how to actually create and build out a remarketing audience from step one all the way to the end, what you see here. So you can check out that video right there if you aren't sure how to create a remarketing audience. Once you have the audience, then you can just come in here and add that in and you could target things like people who are hit your website the last 45 days or anybody who hit a specific page or purchased a specific thing on your website. You can customize targeting to all of those different people. There are these additional audience segments here where you can do custom searches as well. This is where you could say anybody who has searched a specific term on Google also target those people. For my example, let's say that there are people who are looking for DIY slat walls. I could show my YouTube shorts to anybody who has searched for that specific thing inside of there. And then finally, you do have exclusions. This is really helpful if you run an e-commerce store and you want to exclude any of your current customers, or if you run a software company and you want to exclude any of your current customers as well, this is a great opportunity to utilize that. You will have to go through and build that list once again for that, where you can do like all of your people who purchased, for example, the purchases of Corbin DIY. Once again, the remarketing tutorial will walk you through on how to do that if you aren't sure. And then down here, we do have the audience expansion and little checkbox. Now, if you are running an interest-based targeting campaign, then checking this box may not be the worst thing in the world because basically what it's going to do is it's going to give Google the green light to target people outside of that audience if they think they will take a specific action. However, if you are running a remarketing list, I would highly recommend it not checking this box because if you check this box, then you're going to be targeting people that are outside of your remarketing list and may not be as effective. So use this how you want to for this interest-based targeting. We're going to keep it checked. If you're running remarketing, keep it unchecked. And then finally, if you wanted to get even more targeted, there are these content where your ads can show. You can target based on keywords. As we mentioned, you can type in specific keywords here. You can also do topics. You can browse specific topics inside of this or search for them. And then there also are placements. So you can do specific YouTube channels that you can type in, video views, video lineups, which is really nice. Now, keep in mind when you are running these, you need to make sure you have a big enough audience to run. So play around with it. And if the audience isn't big enough, you will have to add more interest or more YouTube channels inside of there to target these specific audiences. And now we get to the actual ad creation process. Now, one thing that confuses a lot of people is that you do have to have a YouTube account and the video has to be posted to that YouTube account in order for you to run YouTube shorts ads. You can't just get inside of Google ads and then create your video and upload it into here. It actually already needs to live inside of the YouTube ecosystem. So what you do is you can come over here to your YouTube account and then inside of here, the video can either be public or unlisted. So if you didn't want to show publicly on your profile, you could do that, but you want to come in here and you want to get this link here. And then you can come over and you can type that in and actually target that specific video. Now, another concern that people have when it comes to short ads is how to actually get them created. Of course, one of the best ways is to just create them yourself, but I know that that is sometimes hard for people. So what I generally recommend if people don't want to create themselves or they need to get creators is I do recommend a service called Billow. Um, you can check out a link down below to check this out and see if you like it. I think they do a really good job and have a great library of creators that match pretty much any kind of product or service. I use this service personally and for a lot of the companies that I help run ads for. So that's just an option that I want 
want to give you in case you don't know where to go to for YouTube shorts ad. Next, once we have the actual ad inside of here, then we can actually define the URL, the long headline, the description, and then also just name this ad. So I'm going to quickly go through and fill out this information here. Okay. So now we have our final URL here. We added a long headline and a description. You can do up to 90 characters on both these, which is nice. I just did really short ones. This is really important for the YouTube shorts is they kind of, this is not default checked, but you do want to make sure you click on this call to action and add a call to action here, whether it's shop now, learn, watch, whatever it may be. You can also add a headline. You can see that adds a nice little button here inside of the ad. Now there are pros and cons to this because obviously it makes it look even more like an ad when you have that here there. You can see right here, it just has that little sponsored thing. So it looks less like an ad, but I do like to have the call to action in here to get people to actually go to the website or to actually purchase or get the lead, whatever it may be on this specific ad. And then we scroll down here to the actual bid. And when it comes to bidding, as I mentioned, we are bidding at a target CPM. CPM stands for cost per milli. In other words, cost to reach a thousand people is what that basically means. So our bid is based on that. You can see Google will typically give you a suggestion on what to run with. It's giving me a suggestion of $2 and 10 cents to start with. That's generally, if you don't know what your target CPM is, or if you don't have historical data, I would recommend going around that number. Now, what I like to do is I don't always trust Google. So what I will generally do is I will take their bid or whatever they suggest, and I will cut it usually by like 30%. So for this one, I would go like 160 and run a target CPM around that. You can see Google's going to tell us, Hey, you should probably bid around this to get the most out of your budget. But my budget is already pretty small. You can see over here, it's still giving me an idea of how much I'll be able to reach when I use that. Now, if for whatever reason you run this target CPM, and then you come back the next day after 24 or 48 hours, and you notice that you're not getting any impressions, that's where you can then go through and bump up your target CPM. But when it comes to, especially if you're running a small budget, I don't want to be overpaying for an impression based on what Google is recommending. Because at the end of the day, remember Google is a business and they want you to spend as much money as possible on the platform. So I would take whatever they recommend and cut it by 30 or 40%, run it for a few days. And if you aren't getting impressions, then up it from there. So we're going to do 160 as a target CPM. And we are pretty much good to go. You can see it will give us an idea of how many impressions we will get on this from here. Then we can simply hit create campaign. It will then say, congratulations, your campaign is ready. And then it has all of the different information here. And then we can trim the video using AI here, or we can go to the overview. And now this is where you can see it is currently in review after the review process, then it will go live. So it will take one to two days for it to come through. Once you are in here, you can come over to campaigns. And then this is where you'll be able to see your campaign there. You can see we have this shorts interest base. You can change the budget as you need. And then right here in this column is where you'll be able to start seeing the results and the impressions come through inside of the account. So you'll see impressions, the cost that you are spending, and then your average cost per million impressions, basically. And now congratulations, your ads are now ready to run. Be sure to subscribe if you are interested in more Google ads content or YouTube ads. We'll see you in the next one.